Well, good morning, guys, and welcome to the show. Fernando. Welcome to the show. Today we have this. This is a Ford Ranger. We haven't filmed one of these Ford Rangers, and we thought today would be a great time to do it because it's getting a full system. And we know how you guys love the full systems. After the intro, we'll tell you all about it. Stay tuned. So the Ford Ranger is back, for those of you guys that didn't know, which apparently a lot of you guys didn't know that because we don't see a lot of them, almost none to be honest with you. We've only done like three or four total. Let's see what this has in it. In the door panel, it has, this is a tweeter mount. It's, it's very large, but yeah. So we have a tweeter here, mid-range down here in the bottom of the door. It has a eight inch touchscreen, which is cool. So we could probably replace this at some point in time with the MFT one kit. We're not today though. In the rear door, it has a, another six and a half. And underneath the seat, there's that area right there. Now we kind of struggled trying to find something that goes in there because we don't build boxes but we did find one because apparently in australia this thing is very popular so we found some companies in australia that ship here to the united states and we ordered a box to go in there which we'll see later on in the show what are we going to be putting in there to make this thing rock Let's take a look. Box is gonna get a Kicker Comp RT. We're gonna put a key 200.4 on the front, a 500.1 on the sub. We're gonna be using the pack T harness to go into it. We have some LGD greens to load down the radio, some speaker brackets, two sets of Morels, Maximo Ultra 602 Mark IIs, as well as some Temple Ultra two-way 602s. We're gonna be using the Morel fast rings, and then this is the enclosure right here. We have a lot of work in store for this. Nothing left to do but get started. Let's join Fernando over on the door, and we'll take this thing apart and see what's actually behind the door panel. To remove the door panel that you never touched before, you kind of go around the door panel and see where are the screws, notches under the handle and the upper handle, maybe on the corner. As a 99% of the cars, they have screw behind the door handle right here. We grab a flat screwdriver, carefully pry it out. And we have a Torx. Now on the handle and the bottom side, you can see a notch right here. Grab your plastic, don't grab a screwdriver, but you can, you, you can actually damage the plastic. And go slow around the whole panel. Sometimes it's scary, but. And just play around with the whole, with the whole panel until So you remove it. See, you don't need too many clips, but apparently you do. We have two that fall in here. We remove it, we find those clips. If you now we have replacements, we have two torques, one in the bottom, one in the top. Now we have two more in the bottom, right here. And then after that, same thing. Grab your plastic pry tool, start slowly. See, here we go. Go around, don't pry it from one side because you can actually break the door panel. As you see, this one has to come out first. Have the Twitter clip. You're gonna need your metal pry tool to remove the clip. And with that, we have the door panel off. Now it is taking a look at factory speaker. It is in fact a six and a half. It is got four wires on it. The reason why it has four wires is that two of them are coming in from the factory radio. Two of them are going out to the tweeter. That is important when looking at a speaker because sometimes you'll only hook up two and then you'll be like, why doesn't my tweeter work? Speaker harnesses for this do retain that, which is cool. The problem that we run into with these brackets is that most of them are too deep now for aftermarket speakers so we'll have to take a look at that we may have to make our own bracket we've ran into that in the mustang we ran into that in the explorers we might run into that in this car also for sound treatment we are going to be doing our basic sound treatment upgrade which means we're going to take care of this area here we pull the speaker out we'll be taking care of the area behind the speaker and then we'll also be doing the door panel itself because that is where most of the rattle comes from so we'll be concentrating on this area all through here we're going to retain this because this is killing some of the road noise, which my guess is this car probably has a substantial amount. Any place like up in here where there's a possibility for rattle, we'll take care of it with our sound treatment. Let's take a closer look at the speakers we are gonna be putting in the door. Tempo Ultra two-way 602 component system from Morel. 
inside the box. Cardboard passive crossovers that we will not be using for this particular install. Let's take a look at them though, just in case you're going to be using them. You have your inputs here, tweeter attenuation, minus zero and plus two, tweeter negative, and then the woofer positive or negative. This is not a biampable crossover, it is just a standard two-way crossover. Mid-base has this nice rubber surround, treated cone. The dust cap is also made out of like a rubber. It's kind of neat, you don't have to worry about denting it. Metal basket, decent sized magnet. It has this cool grating over it to keep particulates from getting inside of the open voice coil. It does have an oversized voice coil inside, just like Morel's do. The positive and negative are on this cool little plastic mounted piece here, as opposed to just some generic one. And then this is the Morel Tempo tweeter. It's a 1.1 inch voice coil on this tweeter is a silk soft dome. It has a frequency response of, according to this, 1800 to 22,000 is a four ohm tweeter with 80 watts of capability, 90 dBs of efficiency. They put a lot on the back of their tweeters. Has this cool mesh grill. This guy here is gonna have to fit inside of this guy here. It is gonna have to go deep down in the bowels of this, which will address in a little bit. The speaker that's gonna be replaced is this thing here. As far as factory goes, it is a standard Ford speaker. Plastic basket, small magnet, all in one configuration. It has a foam surround and a paper cone, not treated paper, just straight paper. It is not treated on the front or back. Paper is fine if you're gonna use it in the door, but you should treat it. You'll be replacing these at some point in the car because water will get in the door and will cause this to warp at some point. Has the foam here, this is the factory style fast ring. The brackets we're hoping to use for this are the 82 FD1s from Metro. Inside the bag, you get two of the plastic brackets. There again, we're hoping these aren't too deep, but you also get the harness. Now this harness is for down here at the base. It does not come with the tweeter harness, but it does have those four wires that we were talking about. So if you are going to be retaining the tweeter through the factory harness, you can. It has these two big loops so that if you are gonna be using the passive crossovers, you can do that. So you can cut it here, run your own wires up via passive crossover. We're gonna be going full active on this. So we're just gonna leave it just like this. We don't have to do anything. We're running our own wires into the door to do that. Let me show you what I mean. This particular door harness in here is a basic door harness meaning there's no giant clip or anything like that and we can easily feed easily being a funny word it was a pain in the butt but we can feed a wire through here with minimal issue and we'll run it into the car and we'll bring it up and we'll just zip tie this in place and we'll have our tweeter wire there. This will give us the most control with the kicker key. We can run it in bi amp mode. It'll have one and two on the tweeters, three and four on the mid bass. It'll give us the most control and the loudest front sound stage. Pretty cool. Let's get back and take a look at how we're going to get that tweeter into place. I'd like to get this tweeter out of here and see if I can get my morale tweeter to go in here. There are some clips on here that push down. There we go, there's the little bad boy here. There's a clip here that is fixed, and then there's two clips on the back side here that actually push in, fun design for sure. It'd be nice if we could take this all apart, but it is plastic welded together from two pieces. And our tweeter is a little bigger than theirs. There's little tiny feet on the inside of this that I believe I can ground out and we might be in luck. After removing those two little pieces that are the guides for this tweeter, there's little ridges right here that they slide in. Our tweeter, believe it or not, just snaps into place, which is fantastic. It uses the same three locking mechanisms. If we need to, this tweeter will snap back in because we've retained all the snapping portion of it. We'll dress up the wire here, put some connectors on it, and this will be ready to get into the car once we get the wires ran up to it. To dress this up, we'll take some quarter inch flex loom, cut its size. Small piece of heat shrink on either end. Add on two male bullet connectors and this is all set and ready to get into the car.